The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2.14. Good morning, friends in Christ. Welcome to prayer on Thursday, the 9th of November. We continue this week with the Book of Common Prayer order for morning prayer. So we take a deep breath as we begin. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry ways to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here with me today, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of heavenly grace. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech God to grant us true repentance and the Holy Spirit, that those things may please the Lord which we do at this present and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at last we may come to God's eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Together, amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, together, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us, together. O Lord, make haste to help us, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, together, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, together, the Lord's name be praised. The Venite. O come, and let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 61, a psalm of deep trust and prayer to God. Hear my crying, O God, give ear unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I call upon thee, when my heart is in heaviness. O lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been my refuge and a strong tower for me against the enemy. I will dwell in thy tabernacle forever, and my trust shall be under the covering of thy wings. 
For thou, O God, hast heard my desires, and hast given an heritage unto those that fear thy name. Thou shalt grant the king a long life. His years shall be as many generations. He shall dwell before God for ever. O prepare thy loving mercy and faithfulness, that they may preserve him. So will I always sing praise unto thy name, that I may daily perform my vows. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, together, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We jump ahead to Nehemiah chapter 12 today, so several intervening chapters skipped which includes the completion of the wall, the list of the exiles who returned from their captivity. Then in chapter 8, the first mention of the prophet Ezra, who renews the covenant with the people. Nehemiah, the great and gifted, faithful administrator, rebuilds the wall and regathers the people, while it is the prophet Ezra who rebuilds in the power of the Holy Spirit the spiritual life of the community. Nehemiah establishes some policies and procedures, and then in chapter 12, a listing of the priests and Levites. Now, chapter 12, verse 27 to verse 31, the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites were sought out from where they lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres. The singers also were brought together from the region around Jerusalem, from the villages of the Natophathites, from Beth Gilgal, and from the area of Geba and Asmaveth, for the singers had built villages for themselves around Jerusalem. When the priests and Levites had purified themselves ceremonially, they purified the people, the gates, and the wall. I had the leaders of Judah go up on top of the wall. I also assigned two large choirs to give thanks. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 to 19. This concerns John's vision of the temple, which may well be a symbol of the church. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the worshipers there. But exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days covered in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies looked on. At that very hour there was a severe earthquake, and a tent of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders, who were seated on their thrones before God, fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was. 
because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your saints, and those who revere your name, both small and great, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant, and there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and earthquake, and a great hailstorm. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, there's so much complex symbolism here and references from the Older Testament that it is beyond our ability to really go into much today. But suffice to say this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. There is our security and protection. Troubles will come as they do throughout history, but evil always has its days numbered. Evil's reign will definitely end because it is the Lord who is the ruler of all creation. And at some point in history, the seventh trumpet will sound, which will announce the arrival of the king and God's judgment will be carried out most certainly. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Now, friends, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you, together and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us, together. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for all conditions of people. We pray, O God, the creator and preserver of all humankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations, More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in body, mind, or estate. For those who require your healing touch, O Lord, for those who mourn this day, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ his sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, for the hope of glory, and we beseech thee, Give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, 
and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Thursday.